both of these samples have brand new fuel. The non-ethanol gasoline is on the left, kerosene is on the right. Um, it doesn't matter what the octane of the gas is, it doesn't matter what type of kerosene this is, this is just a general demonstration. So first of all, gasoline will instantly combust with an ignition source all the way down to about negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Kerosene is quite a bit different. In order for kerosene to combust with an ignition source, it needs to be at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. For purposes, I will light both of these samples with a match and we'll see how they burn. Uh, in my shop here, um, both samples are about 60 degrees, so that's what we're starting with. I moved my operation outside here just to be safe. We're going to start with the gas first. Right, next will be the kerosene. The primary reason for running kerosene back in the day was the price. In 1943, the median price for gasoline was about 21 cents per gallon. The median price for kerosene was about 67 cents per gallon. Kerosene has a much lower octane rating than gas, somewhere below 20. When burned efficiently with enough heat, kerosene performs much like gasoline. You can see even with a direct ignition source, kerosene doesn't burn at this temperature. Now I'm going to take an electric heat gun and heat the kerosene up to 100 degrees and then uh, perform the same test. And I've got my laser thermometer to check the temp. Well, that didn't take long. It says it's 102 degrees now. Still doesn't want to burn. There it goes. So you can see that once it's ignited, kerosene burns just as well as gasoline does, or close enough for our purposes. The kerosene just needs to be much, much warmer before it will ignite. So the all fuel tractors, they say to start on gasoline, let the engine get to operating temperature and then switch to kerosene. That's why. So I reset the experiment I uh, have equal amounts of gasoline and kerosene. I'm gonna light them both at the same time and see which one burns longer. Looking from above here, if I get the heat gun on the kerosene, kerosene five, yeah, mid 500s, gasoline, mid 400s. And let me check the heat again. All right, about 600 on the kerosene and about 550 on the gas.
Well, there went the gas. Kerosene is out. Time check. So the results of this test conclude that kerosene needs heat to ignite, a minimum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and gasoline doesn't require any heat at all. Kerosene burns significantly warmer than gasoline, and it burns slower than gasoline. Like kerosene, these fuels were only a fraction of the cost of gasoline. Octane ratings were generally about 35 to 45. The terms tractor fuel and distillate were interchangeable. There was also another term commonly interchangeable called tractor vaporizing oil, or TVO for short. And there was another fuel called power fuel, which is simply a higher grade of tractor fuel. Power fuel is still a lower grade fuel than gasoline, but higher than kerosene or distillate. So I'll proceed with the experiment now. I'll go ahead and get the tractor started. I'll run it on gasoline until it gets up to operating temperature, and then we'll switch over to kerosene. And we know from this experiment that the kerosene will ignite, and it should burn just as well as gasoline. This gas tank is not currently uh, plumbed in to the system. So for the sake of the experiment, I'm going to install this Y splitter in line between the carburetor and the uh, sediment bowl. All right, that should work great. All right, I've got my temporary kerosene tank attached and uh, plumbed into the Y splitter down there. All set to go. And if anybody is interested, uh, there's an extra four minutes at the very end of this video, which shows me making this can.
So from the experiment at the beginning of the video, we know that kerosene requires more heat to ignite it. Once it's lit, it burns pretty much like gasoline does. Kerosene was burning warmer than gas, quite significantly in fact, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 degrees warmer. It also burned longer than gasoline did. So does that mean it's more efficient? But as far as the experiment and running this on the tractor, I could not tell when the tractor switched from gasoline to kerosene or when it switched from kerosene back to gasoline. There was no discernible difference in uh, RPM or smoke out of the exhaust or anything of that nature. So now I can see why back in the day, kerosene or distillate or TVO, tractor fuel, all that stuff was the preferred fuel because it was just so cheap. And once the tractors heat up, they run great on the stuff. So that was a fun experiment for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So as soon as I got the can cleaned out and cleaned up, I noticed on the outside there's a crack in it. I'm going to try to repair that with some solder before I go any further with it. I've learned from my experience as being a home brewer and uh, installing many of these ball valves in my uh, kettles here and my kegs that the trick to getting a valve like this to seal and not leak is just to make the hole in the container the perfect size. You don't need to use silicone, you don't need to use any kind of a product I even try to get my hole so close to the same size that I end up having to thread the valves into the container. Put a washer on the outside, a washer on the inside, and these things won't leak a drop. So I'm going to try to do the same thing with this can and this spout. And I think the safest thing to do is to use a narrow step bit and just sort of creep up on the size that I want. nailed it see I can't push it through the hole but I can thread it through the hole on the inside I'm going to use uh, o-ring and a washer okay try that Solder is holding, no leaks, and there's also no leaks by the spout. And looks like excellent flow. I think this can is going to be very useful. I should have made one of these a long time ago.